everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, we are here to present about the Democracy of Refrigeration. Uh, um, my name is Carvalho Delta. I'm here presenting with Kevin Bell, uh, Victor Navarro, and Hassan Sakamu. Uh, so, conventional refrigerated units today uh, operate mainly using uh, compressed coolant that is released into the environment, uh, helping uh, with uh, global warming and causing ozone deterioration. Our goal is to come up with an alternative technology to replace or to possibly that to possibly replace these uh, refrigeration units uh, that is more eco-friendly. Uh, we're investigating thermoacoustics, uh, the thermoacoustic phenomenon to possibly uh, replace these, these technologies. Uh, uh, thermoacoust uh, thermoacoustics and thermoacoustic refrigerations operate mainly using sound waves uh, to create pressure differences within a uh, resonator tube. Uh, the sound waves create uh, low pressure and high pressure sectors in the tube, uh, causing a temperature difference. Um, the thermoacoustic refrigeration is made, made uh, the main components are the resonator tube, uh, the working fluid, which is usually air or helium, the loudspeaker, which needs to operate at low frequencies to be the most efficient, uh, and that's the main uh, the causes of pressure differences in the tube. The stack, which needs to have a low therm lower thermal conductivity and higher heat capacity. Of that. High capacity and lower thermal conductivity than the working fluid. Uh, and the thermal couples to measure the temperature and the tensor across the stack. Uh, as you can see, this is the main cycle that it goes through. Uh, it compresses the, the fluid inside the, 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 the stack, projects heats to the stack. Uh, the, the, the fluid expands inside the stack, and then uh, the heat is absorbed in the stack. Uh, brief history of uh, thermoacoustic refrigeration. Uh, the, the relationship between sound and temperature change was first noticed in, by actually glass blowers in the 1800s who heard sound emitted from their heated containers. In 1886, the first thermoacoustic engine was created. The thermoacoustic engine creates heat from, from sound waves. In 1970, uh, the linear theory that is used to model thermoacoustics today was uh, started to be developed, and in the 1980s, the, uh, the first conceptual uh, design of a thermoacoustic refrigerator was uh, made by Los Alamos. The uh, main objective for this project is to create a measurable change within the stack to create a, to demonstrate this uh, this phenomenon. Uh, we want to create a portable cooling system uh, to, to demonstrate that it's reliable and uh, to replace conventional. Uh, portable coolers uh, in the real world. Um, the good thing about thermoacoustics is that it's emission free and uh, energy efficient. Uh, the materials are readily available, available worldwide and so uh, and also very cheap to come by and uh, it can be made to be portable in my way. Some of the standards that we are, have to look at uh, since we are making this device to compare it to conventional units we have to look at standards from uh, refrigerator insti refrigeration institutes like uh, AHRA, SHRA, E, and AHRI. Uh, the standards to measure temperature change, uh, pressure, and power uh, we're going to use to uh, fairly compare these these devices. Uh, also, safety standards are something we have to consider as well. And uh, and also since it's a main driver of this device is sound, we have to look at, make sure that those are, uh, it's not too loud, it's not going to cause any sound pollution, so uh, also standards for, for those things. Uh, and also since we're going to be manufacturing something, we have to look at standards relating to uh, the components that we're using, as well as uh, materials and uh, also manufacturing standards. Okay, so we have three different lines that we're thinking of implementing to try to find the best one that works for our project. The first one we titled Nancy uses an extended tube. Within it, there is one stack, which is a horizontal stack. Along the tube, we put two different um, external tubes that allow us to place the thermal couples within it and then get a more accurate reading. Insulation was also a big thing for us. We made a speaker lock at the end to actually hold it all together. Um, within our next iteration of design, which we titled as Richard, they borrowed a lot of the same things from Nancy, but within this case, we used a stack that actually uses non-uniform circular tubing, 
but also take into consideration the insulation as well as um, we change the cap for a flat cap, hoping it will get better oscillations. The next design, we titled Sebastian, which borrows the same caps from Richard, but in this case it actually uses uniform circular tubing to make the stack. Um, so in the next slide, you can actually see the multiple stacks that we're thinking of implementing. Even though we showed the first three designs with particular stacks, we have, we have iterations that we're hoping to try within them to try to get a higher accuracy. Um, we can actually develop these ourselves by manufacturing using 3D printing and thermal plastics to make the rings that will house the interiors. The interiors will either have something like a mylar sheet with fishing line, as you can see with the spiral one there, or it will have something like fiberglass because of its um, high thermal conductivity and low thermal expansion. Hello. For the testing criteria, I uh, want to know which type of stack would be most effective. Well, we first have to see that the material that is selected for the stack determines the geometry, specifically the plate thickness. Uh, mylar was selected because of its uh, relative high heat capacity and low thermal conductivity. Uh, the location of the stack also plays into account of the coefficient of performance. Within the uh, resonator tube, because it's a loudspeaker, it produces sinusoidal waves. And within those sinusoidal waves, there are uh, areas of high pressure and low pressure. Low pressure areas are called velocity nodes, and high pressure areas are called pressure nodes. Ideally, you would like to place the stack center in between those two nodes. The velocity node should be in contact with the cold side of the stack, and the pressure node should be in contact with the hot side of the stack. As for the working fluid, common choices are atmospheric air or helium under pressure to increase acoustical power. We chose helium for its high thermal conductivity and relative inertness. Here, the hypothesized design can be seen as a Nancy archetype, using a wound parallel plate stack, a single stack within the resonator, and helium as the working fluid. As you can see in the figure, is a simple and relative step-by-step -step design process. You begin with selecting your gas, your desired temperature range, and a required cooling power. The next step is to optimize these parameters to raise the COP. After that has been determined, you try to find, um, you determine the normalized center position of the stack and the normalized length of the stack. Using those two variables, you may calculate the normalized cooling power and using your required cooling power that you selected earlier, you may determine the cross-sectional area. The cross-sectional area for the stack is the same inner cross-sectional area of the resonator. Alright, so in front of us we have a budget table for a hypothesized uh, design. We have seven different components from starting from loudspeaker that's supposed to get to a uh, thousand kilohertz, going to a printing tubing, going to a miler sheet and fishing line to create the stack, and then lastly you have uh, housing, o ring, and gas valves to isolate um, the gases. Throughout this, we calculated to be under $200, and we can find any levels. Uh, we're going to use two different programs, one being Delta EC, and one SolidWorks for simulations. Delta EC is a thermodynamic analysis for acoustic systems, and in, in SolidWorks, we're going to use a, a vibration analysis, a drop test, and a thermal stress analysis for each component and the whole device together. Uh, so our main goal is to get a uh, measurable change in temperature within the stack. But well, we're hoping to get temperatures to reach as low as 50 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, which we can use in, in computer cooling, maybe car cooling, and even a small portable refrigerator. In front of us, we have a projected progression of our group where we're about to hit December, and our conceptual design should is almost done. Uh, following is going to be simulation analysis, going to prototyping, testing, and then finalizing our design. Thank you for for taking your time to listen up our, our presentation, and we would like to open the floor for any questions and suggestions. First question. Um, so you'd like to hit 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Have you done any theoretical work to prove that you can pull, use this technology and, and pull about 30 degrees out of, out of material, use the process? 
the, the simulation work is going to come uh, next. Uh, but no ballpark work, something well, that we did, just to well, prove we did some research on similar uh, research devices. That, that it would work. Um, they've got ranges, I believe, to negative 20 or so. Now, we don't know if we can reach an efficiency that well because of our ability to machine and manufacture, but we hope to at least get to So systems like this have already been used they have been from room temperature down to negative right. 20? Um, I believe Ben and Jerry was one of the first people to implement it, and they use it to cool their ice cream. So you can actually keep it relatively cool and get to that kind of thing. What we want to do is make it cost efficient and be able to be portable, which is our, our main goal, our main challenge. Like our main thing is to make it eco-friendly, cost efficient, and for us particularly, we just want to show that this system works to get a measurable change in temperature within the system. Okay, and then my other question is critical damping frequency. Do you know what the critical damping frequency of the stack is going to be, so that you know it's not going to do something? Yes, we have uh, research some formulas uh, that model it, and we have the the, the simulation software Delta EC. So we're going to do all that all that simulation as well, and as well as uh, testing. So we're going to try to test different stacks, different stacks placements, and see which which uh, configuration. I have two questions for you. Uh, first one is, have you allowed yourself enough time for the prototyping stage? Do you think two weeks is sufficient? Or is it two months? Two months. Two months. Oh, two months. Yeah, two months. Um, the second question I have is, um, the main emphasis of your project is um, emissions. And uh, your one of your targets is just temperature, or your validation is just temperature, or trying to reach 50 degrees. Are you also um, measuring what kind of emissions you will be getting out of the system? Well, at this point, um, or you're using, or you're using current research just to say this is what this kind of um, product um, emits, and we're just it's transferable to our application. Our design doesn't use any harmful gases, so any emissions wouldn't be harmful. It's a running based on electric speaker. There's nothing going out of it except for the tube just getting hot and cold on one side. So like, just keep it as efficient as possible in terms of how much power it consumes and, it, and the working fluids that it uses, if they're not uh, harmful. So if they're not, and they're not even meant to be expelled, so they're self contained as well. So, so even if the tubing does get cracked, it wouldn't do anything for it. It's completely fine. Could you talk a little bit more about the cost aspect of this as compared to uh, what we're using now today? Well, a lot of the materials can be found in your local Home Depot and uh, a music hobbyist shop. Because for our design, for our prototype that we'd like to build, we uh, want to use a loudspeaker that we bought online. And that loudspeaker was $90, and that is the most expensive part that we've come across so far. Other parts, such as the resonator tube and stacks, can be made using uh, PVC piping or going to uh, the insulation section, grabbing uh, rolls of fiberglass and testing out empirically which stack would be the best. Also, so it's relatively easy. Sorry. Um, also, before anything else, like, you have to consider the cost of the effects of refrigeration on our environment as it is already. So if you want to take that into consideration before anything else, before the cost of anything, we're reducing the emissions of the CO2 gases and in turn helping the planet you know, become a little better. Uh, besides that, for the most part, I think the, the most complex part is just manufacturing the actual stack. We've done the 3D printing over a week or so. Um, so the cost of that one roll of filament is just anywhere in the range of 20 to $30. And then things like the fiberglass or the mylar sheets are up really inexpensive. So as he said, this speaker is really the biggest component for us. Thank you.